Samsung, one of the world's largest electronics companies, is facing an escalating challenge in India. In the bustling town of Sri Perambadur, near Chennai, thousands of workers at Samsung's key manufacturing plant are on strike for the second consecutive week. The strike began on the 9th of September. Nearly 100 protesters were detained and later released on 17th of September when they tried to head towards the district collector's house in Kanjipuram. Their primary demand? The right to form a union, a fundamental workers' right they claim has long been denied. But why has the situation reached a tipping point and what does it mean for Samsung's operations in India? attitude of the government, attitude of the labor department, attitude of the management and uh, local administration. The Sri Perambadur plant plays a pivotal role in Samsung's global production network. Located in Tamil Nadu, it is a crucial facility responsible for producing some of Samsung's most popular appliances such as refrigerators, washing machines and televisions. Tamil Nadu also dominates India's electronics exports with a 34% share. With India aiming to become one of the world's fastest growing markets for consumer electronics, this factory is integral not just for the domestic market but also for exports. However, despite the plant's importance, the workers who keep its operations running feel increasingly marginalized. The strike is backed by the Center of Indian Trade Unions, CITU, a national labor organization which has its ties to the CPIM. At the heart of this strike, lies the workers' demand for the right to form a union. Unionization is a basic right in many parts of the world, aimed at giving workers a collective voice to negotiate better wages and working conditions with benefits. But according to the striking employees, Samsung's management has consistently denied them this right. Workers allege that attempts to unionize have been met with severe pushback from the company, creating an environment where they feel powerless to negotiate. Beyond the right to unionize, the workers have raised a series of other concerns. Long working hours, limited wage hikes and inadequate health benefits are among the major issues. The company has expressed its intent to resolve the situation through negotiations, but it has refrained from commenting directly on the workers' union demands. The strike has already caused significant disruptions to Samsung's production line. According to the Indian Express, Samsung has been reluctant to engage with the union with its affiliation to CITU being a particular area of concern for the company. With the plant's operations at a near standstill, the ripple effects could soon be felt in the supply chain, especially in the Indian market. As demand for electronic goods surges, any prolonged disruption could affect Samsung's ability to meet its targets, potentially driving consumers to other brands. And as the strike enters its second week, the stakes are high for both Samsung and its workers. For the employees, this is a fight for their basic rights and future livelihoods. For Samsung, how it handles this situation could have long-lasting implications for its reputation and operations in India. Will the workers be granted the right to unionize or will this strike lead to more complex labor disputes in the future? Only time will tell.